Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! For a Jewish man was beaten in Times Square by people taking part in a pro-Palestinian protest. You're gonna get expelled again, you oh, William, no! You're gonna get expelled, you Jew! We're kicking you out again! And let it be known that we here in Berkeley support the Intifada! Two teens were told to repeat anti-Semitic statements. When they refused, they were punched in their heads. Brooklyn Net star again refused to apologize for posting a link to an anti-Semitic film which denies the Holocaust and falsely blames Jews for slavery. I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. Queens University students are on high alert after swastikas were found on campus. Someone painted a swastika on campus. You can't fight people who don't believe that the Holocaust happened. Those are people sitting in power. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. The thing we know is that, unfortunately, there are people out there that want to kill us for one reason, because we are a Jew. How do we stop anti-Semitism is kind of this impossible question, because you're always going to have people in the world that hate other people for no reason. I feel like there's definitely this barrier between me and true hateful anti-Semitism. You know, I grew up in like suburban Northeast America. The city of Newton that I grew up in is probably more than a quarter Jewish on Saturdays. The streets are like flooded with people walking to and from synagogue. When you're not exposed to a certain community, it's really easy to harbor assumptions about them. I know that I grew up being insecure about some of the things that make me Jewish. I have, I'll say, like stereotypical Ashkenazi features with the, the dark curly hair, and I wear uh, Judaica jewelry. I've straightened my hair before for like job interviews if I wanted to seem less Jewish. People have always been scared of the Jewish people for some reason. You know, there's this word scapegoat that people use to describe um, like Jews throughout history. We're a minority group when it's convenient. We're a group of white people when it's convenient. And it's like whatever we need to become for people filled with hatred to blame us for their problems like we are. I mean, it all goes back to, you know, lies that were told about us by, you know, the Babylonians and then the Romans and then the, the, ch the church. Uh, and then, you know, going up from that, all these lies compound together until eventually it's just constantly a monster that everywhere we go, people believe at least some of these things. I went to Bethlehem, which is an area A of the West Bank. We were talking to the future mayor. He took us to a gift shop in Bethlehem where they had a wall of books. And on this wall of books, every single one had some early Christian sentiment of anti-Semitism, of like, why do Jews have as much money as they do? There was kind of this running joke in my high school with this one kid where people would throw coins at him. He would laugh it off and make jokes about how he was gonna make money and have like, oh, uh, like I'll have made 20 bucks by graduation at this rate if you guys keep doing that. I don't know, like he, he acted like it was fine. I don't know if he felt like it was fine. I certainly was not a fan of it. These Jewish stereotypes trickle down to, to or trickle to today's modern times without in the slightest ways without us even knowing. Well, I've been to Hollywood. It's a lot of Jews. Look at all that puppeteering, <laughs> pulling all those strings at CNN and yeah. Hollywood. You're not going to support me because I don't want your money. I isn't it crazy? <laughs> no, it's true. The right looks upon the Jew as not being white. What's your name? What's your Jewish badge number? We got your license plate. What are you, the kike police? Heil Hitler, you fucking kikes! Heil Hitler! Our country has been usurped by a foreign tribe called the Jews. On the left, uh, you see less violence, but you see more institutionalization. 
Something that I think a lot of people don't understand about the way that anti-Semitism manifests itself in the modern day is the way that it's reflected in criticism of Israel. White supremacy and Zionism are birds of a feather whose flags fly together. Therefore, if one opposes white supremacy, one must oppose Zionism. When you support a state like that, you give up your conscience. You dehumanize people. You are not above people. Criticism of Israeli policies is not anti-Semitism. But when there is a myopic uh, concentration on Israel to the exclusion of all other worlds. There's this very fine line where it's fine to criticize Israel, but if that's the only world government besides your own or like besides America that you're criticizing, like I have to wonder why, like why are you paying attention to this government specifically? Why are you holding Israel to a higher standard? The first time that I had like a personal experience with anti-Semitism was what some of us call the rock incident. The rock is this, uh, it's just this giant rock that's in this pretty central location on BU's campus that's usually painted by fraternities, sororities, other campus groups. It's like a fun little thing that people do. In December 2021, uh, Students for Justice in Palestine painted the words Free Palestine on the rock. There's something I'd like to outline, which is the difference between free speech and the difference and hate speech. The words free Palestine, that's a political statement. It's free speech. That one doesn't bother me as much. At first, like, I wasn't a big fan of it, but it was fine. I understood that that was free speech. However, the Students for Justice in Palestine painted on the rock, long live the intifada. Saying long live the intifada on a campus that has a, such a high Jewish population incites violence. The intifada was a time in the Israel-Palestine region that had heightened time, it was a heightened time of violence. There were a lot of bombs going off in buses, a lot of terrorism. To have those words displayed so prominently on a campus that is 25% Jewish, to me, is a call to violence against those American Jews on this campus that have no control over the Israeli government and its policies. Something that I don't want to see on uh, BU's campus, and it's just a reminder of like, there is anti-Semitic forces out there and they're not going to go away. Even though the rock incident happened over a year ago, I definitely still think about it. Every single time that I walk past the rock on BU Beach, I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that it's just like a Sigma Chi logo and not something anti-Semitic. The college wants to put on a friendly face to all its students and to all of its prospective students. And I know that if I was on a campus tour and I was with my parents and I walked by the rock and they stopped by the rock and they were like, oh, fraternities like to paint over this rock, but written on the rock was long live the intifada. My parents would turn to me and say, you are not safe on this campus. The first thing we did was turn to our friends. And then the second thing we did was turn to Hillel and Hillel told us that the best thing that we could do was to personally reach out to administration. I wrote this email to Dean Elmore. He's the Dean of Students at Boston University outlining why long live the intifada made me as a Jewish student feel unsafe. One of the reasons that we all chose to send these emails was in hopes that it would get BU to recognize how many students were impacted by this. I put a lot of effort into writing an email that sounded polite, that sounded relevant. As much as the literal paint on the rock upset me, it was far worse to me that the incident was completely ignored by BU administration. For some reason, saying we condemn anti-Semitism has become a controversial statement. I cannot understand why. It's kind of insane to me to think that they had that kind of message sitting in their inbox and that it went ignored to that extent.
to like, have no response to that has only solidified that my opinion that BU admin doesn't really care that much about their students. That was just words painted on a rock. Like, what if a hate crime turns violent because nobody said that these words weren't okay? Intifada does not have to be in Gaza or Palestine. We're gonna have an intifada in every classroom. We're gonna have an intifada on every college campus. Intifada, intifada, long live intifada. Intifada, intifada, long live intifada. Lies. Zionists. Fucking Zionists. No more death. Of course you should be allowed to criticize Israel. There's no country that shouldn't have its policies criticized. These anti-Israel groups need to remove the anti-Semitism from their political standpoints. We need to teach people how to criticize the actions of the Israeli government without placing blame on the Jewish population and specifically the American Jewish population. Anti-Semitism is a concern on all sides of the political spectrum. Anti-Semitic ideas, stereotypes, ways of thinking can come up across the political spectrum, left, right or centre. But I think we have to be clear that the great danger of anti-Semitism in the United States today and the most deadly forms of anti-Semitism are coming quite clearly from the right. What happened over the weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia was just disgusting. You're looking at live pictures out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Violent clashes have broken out between white nationalists and counter protests there. I was watching the news like everyone else, and you're seeing like Nazi flags and torches and white supremacists, and I was sick to my stomach. My daughters are in the next room playing, and I'm thinking, how can I explain to them that there's so much hatred in this world? What were those marchers in Charlottesville, what did they mean when they walked across the street, across the campus, chanting, Jews will not replace us? They are motivated by a sense that the uh, white Christian, particularly the white Christian male, but white Christians in general, are facing a genocide. You just must have such a twisted sense of reality if you really believe that such a small group of people who, I don't want to say underrepresented, but so strongly mis misrepresented, that you feel so threatened that you need to go into a public space and say, like, Jews will not replace us. The fact that these people could honestly go out in Charlottesville and, you know, be there in their regular work clothes and look the way that they look in regular life, to see them at this protest and not be worried about what people might think of that speaks volumes to how acceptable this form of hate has become in today's society. President Trump tonight caught in the fallout of all of this, criticized for waiting hours before making his first comments about that violence in Charlottesville. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. This egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides, on many sides. That comment was shocking and horrifying to me that the President of the United States would say that. That showed that there was an unwillingness to condemn white supremacy. I don't think that President Trump is an anti-Semite, but I do think that with his rhetoric and with his comments, he enables anti-Semitism. He makes those people who feel it's okay to put a swastika on the door think that it's okay. When you read their stuff or their uh, postings, they all think he's on their side. They all think he agrees with them. You don't want to cater to the people who have, who have such strong opinions that they've already made up their mind. These people are causing the problem, but these are not the people that are going to change their minds. These people are always going to feel this way. It's the people around them that we need to cater to. These people who might not know what is going on, maybe haven't met Jewish people before, are hearing things around them like Jews will not replace us, but 
they don't know what it means and they don't understand what's being said, those are the people we need to go talk to. Of course, Charlottesville was horrible and everything that happened there was horrible, but it also could always be worse. And if we allow it to happen again, it almost certainly will be worse. Eleven killed, six wounded. The deadliest anti-Semitic attack in the history of the United States. Violences don't seem enough at a moment like this, but I hope you know the hearts of the nation are with you. The world. The world. Indeed, the whole world. Yes. Something like this, it's a different type of anti-Semitism that's just so much more raw. This is deliberate. I hate Jews type of anti-Semitism. I mean, this was when I was freshman year of high school. This was my first time, uh, time in a non-Jewish school. So for the first time, I sort of felt like worried because, you know, there's people who weren't Jewish. Maybe they, uh, and who knows? You know, I mean, I was just 14 at the time. Maybe they had some sort of ill will towards me. It's, it's horrifying to think that that happened in a synagogue. And that's a place where I go to worship. Like, it, it could have happened in my synagogue, too. I barely remember Pittsburgh because, to me, things like that just all blur together. It's happened again since, and it, I just like know that it's going to keep happening. I know a lot of synagogues and hillals around the country have upped their security in response to the Tree of Life shooting. Ever since then, like on on a Sabbath, there's a cop there. It's a big holiday that draws in a lot of people. There might be two cops at the front entrance, a cop or two at other entrances. Any Jewish institution that doesn't have some form of security outside it, people say, what? What's going The on? kids are used to that. Mm -hmm. The kids are used to, when they come to the synagogue, they're used to saying thank you to the policeman. It definitely makes me feel safer that when I go into Hillel to know that the windows are made of bulletproof glass and to know that you have to swipe into the building with your BUID and to know that there's someone sitting at the front desk seeing who's coming into the building. It's weird because it's so terrible that that has to happen, but there's such like a love and understanding between like the Jewish community members and the security team. The suspect in today's mass shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh had an extensive anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish digital footprint. Leading up to the incident, Bowers used Twitter to spew hate, calling Jews the children of Satan. People who are prone to radicalization, people who are vulnerable and are, are reading all of this nonsense and hate speech online, they, they become radicalized by what they read, by what they hear, and then they do crazy things. Anti-Semitic content has surged on Twitter after Elon Musk, who emphasized free speech, took full control. The narrative that uh, um, that free that hate speech is free speech, it's sort of winning out right now on these platforms. A student came up to me in front of everyone and said, Miss Shana, are you Jewish? And then another student shouted out, Kanye West hates Jews. The likes of a Kanye West says the quiet part out loud. Mm -hmm. What are the ramifications? He has followers. And not only does he have followers, but he has followers amongst young people. In the middle schools and the high schools, the kids are getting, you know, oh, you Jew, oh, Hitler didn't kill it. And the kid who's saying it may not even know what they really mean by it. It's his platform that is the problem. He's saying these things like, let's go DEF CON 3 on the Jewish people. Kanye West has been suspended from Twitter once again after posting an anti-Semitic tweet which showed a picture of the Star of David merged with a swastika. That came hours after the rapper, now known as Ye, was on an episode of InfoWars with right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones and praised Adolf Hitler. I, I like Hitler. I, I don't like Hitler. And I know you're trying to be shocking with that. I'm not trying to be shocking. I like Hitler. I do not. I The, the Holocaust is not what happened. Let's look at the facts of that. Like, I've seen that clip like probably a half dozen times and like hopefully every time I saw it, it was like a fabrication, some deep fake BS, but no, like he genuinely said it and I've, I've seen that plenty of times and I've like, I've watched all kinds of Kanye anti-Semitism compilations because I think it's important for me to know what he's saying. And it's still like, damn it, it's real. Like, it's a reflection of like, this is who he really is. He's like not just saying stuff, he actually believes it. There's something very ironic to me about the fact that 
Kanye is wearing a mask in the clip where he's saying that Hitler is right. Even though everybody seeing that knows that it's Kanye behind the mask, there's still this kind of safety that it provides in the same way that somebody writing a tweet behind a screen. Kanye West has been waging a campaign of anti-Semitism that just inspired a hate group to use his words like a celebrity endorsement for anti-Semitism. There's maybe 15 million Jews in the entire world. And Kanye has many, many, many times that in followers. He has more followers and there are Jewish people in the world. And so the amount of people seeing this message are more than the amount of people being targeted by his hate. Both Twitter and Instagram have restricted his accounts and deleted posts, but the Anti-Defamation League believes West comments may be emboldening hate groups. Display on the campus at Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton involving a social media movement called Ye is Right. In the weeks after, like, his anti-Semitic ranting started, you know, there were white nationalist groups with Kanye West's right signs. The message, presumed to be referring to Kanye's recent anti-Semitic remarks, was displayed for commuters to see as a hate group demonstrated behind the sign, some of them throwing Nazi salutes. You know, how many more people drive down a highway every day that may not follow Kanye on Twitter? It's just like this snowball effect of this one person said this one thing, and now so many people across the country and across the world are seeing this message of hate, thinking, oh, if this important person thinks this hateful thing, maybe I should think that too. Extremists wanting to target the Jewish community are calling tomorrow a National Day of Hate. Hey, you filthy Jew piece of shit. We see you. Neo-Nazi group proclaimed tomorrow to be a National Day of Hate. Leave our country, go back to Israel. You know where you bomb Palestinian kids? Where we fund you stupid fucking Jews? Eight billion dollars a year? You look like a horse. The FBI arrested a 26-year-old man for throwing a flammable object at a synagogue in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Police across our area are warning Jewish communities to be vigilant this weekend. Jewish organizations across the country on high alert. Extremists are urging others to harass and target Jewish communities. The threats coming in the form of social media posts. Back here live, you can see an armed security guard keeping an eye on the temple. Sometimes it's impossible to really know what to do when suddenly you're faced with the reality that people are hating you for no reason. The antidote is to show up. The antidote is to be here in force. The antidote is to not let hate win. The congregation at Temple Emmanuel on the Upper East Side is certainly not hiding. In fact, they're doing just the opposite, choosing to hold Shabbat outside of its Fifth Avenue sanctuary. Unity is a common theme here today. The NYPD and this temple wants congregants to feel safe, all congregants, and that includes leaders from different faiths who've come here today to prove that many voices are louder than one. We're not afraid. We will have services just like we always do. We're not going to cower. We're going to be more proud as Jews, more passionate, more practicing, and feel even more responsible to spread the light and love to offset the darkness and the hate. For me, being part of a Jewish community means it's like knowing that I'm not alone in my pursuit of finding that connection. I get to feel at home and feel comfortable. I grew up in a household where my parents are very proud of their Judaism and always taught me to be proud of my Judaism and to not be afraid of it. There's something like inexplicably fundamental that Jews have in common when we know each other, even if there's nothing else beyond our Judaism. I want college students out there to know that anti-Semitism is real. It's not something that you should be marginalized or trivialized. It, it is something that's very serious. I hope that people can hear these stories and recognize that these are real things that are having a real impact on real people. We've got to educate ourselves to recognize when is the person just a fool 
And when are they an anti-Semitic fool? Nothing is going to change unless people outside of the Jewish community begin to recognize how widespread this problem is. My lasting statement is be wary of the things you post on social media. Be wary of the things you see on social media. We have this great gift of communication and this great gift of finding knowledge. We have to be exceptionally careful about how we use it. Anti-Semitism has been a part of history for so long. It, it really starts with you got to do it one person at a time. How do we call them out? How do we respond? How do we educate them? If these people were able to access like a wider range of information and understand Judaism, understand Jewish culture, understand the overlap between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, that hopefully they'd be able to form a wider opinion. Just learn about their identity, learn about their story, make humanize yourself to them. For me, my Jewish identity is such a core part of me that I, I feel like almost compelled to defend any one against anti-Semitism. You know, I love being Jewish, and I love being around other Jewish people, and I love celebrating our Judaism, and I think that if someone doesn't want to talk to me about how awesome Judaism is, that the best thing I can do is go be happy about being Jewish in their line of sight. But surround yourself with people that care about you, surround yourself with people that love you, and be proud of who you are. I'm not going to turn off this part of my identity that is so important to me.